Welcome back to the Business Library. Today I have Matt Dubois on. As you can hear, I'm not French. I sounds a little bit French last name. The reason why I know Matt is because he hosts these amazing networking events. You loved the episode with Alex Hip, where we talked about networking events, hosting them, which is why I invited Matt to come on because his events are different, but they're just as great, in my opinion, at least. So just to start us off, where did that like whole journey with networking starting like started? Yeah. Um, so my networking journey, uh, well, first off, let me say thank you so much for having me on this, uh, you know, podcast. Um, and, uh, it's great to chat with you and it's been great, uh, networking with you as well. So, um, uh, excited to have this conversation and, and provide some uh, value here. Uh, but my networking journey started with, a uh, um, organization called BNI. A lot of folks might know of it. Um, it's, uh, it's an acronym for, um, Business Networking International, and uh, they they started in the 80s, um, and essentially what happens is you join a chapter in your local area, you connect with uh, local business owners, and you meet every week to kind of build these relationships. And so um, I had been in uh, this networking organization for about um, uh, about a month or so, or no, no, I had been about a year when I realized that um, the in-person networking we were doing could be done online if just adapted. And so um, the idea crossed my mind um, back in 2018. But I, of course, like with most most ideas, I didn't do anything with it. But um, when uh, the pandemic happened in 2020, we all had some time to kind of rethink what we were doing. And that was um, when I started my own networking organization called VEETS, like virtual uh, meets or virtual meetings. And, I love the um, naming of it. I appreciate that. So it wasn't always, yeah, I did, it wasn't always called Veets, but um, I did uh, change to that name because I wanted something short and sweet. And um, But yeah, um, May of 2020 was our first event. Uh, we brought together a variety of business owners from my network onto a call and um, it went well. So we did the next month and uh, fast forward, uh, we've got um, three meetings we do a week with a, a, a group of members and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I can definitely attend to them. That's, I like the fun human part that you really bring to networking. Is that how you want to stand out or how do you see your events as special? You're probably the best at describing that. Yeah. And I appreciate the question. Um, yeah, it's something we really focus on. You know, there's a lot of groups that are maybe bigger in size or they've got unique aspects to them. Uh, the thing that we really focus on is uh, bringing together really authentic networkers, folks that um, come to an event with the goal of building a relationship for the long term, knowing that if they provide value and build that relationship over time, it's going to help their business in a variety of different ways. And so um, we believe that if we can bring uh, a lot of those folks together that see networking in that way, then everybody's going to win. It's going to be a real powerful group. And so far, we've been able to do that. It's been, um, I'm really proud of the folks that we have in our community. And um, we continue to try to bring more folks just like that. If you like the sound of it, I'll leave the link down below for you just so it's, it's real simple for the people listening or watching us today. Um, one thing I have heard is doing a networking event takes quite a lot of effort. And I have hosted like events with like a panel of four people. And as soon as you have more people involved, it, it takes a bit more effort organizing it. Um, you get you throw people into the wrong rooms the same rooms all that kind of stuff there's a much go, like so much going on like <laughs> what encourage you to take on that effort and responsibility yeah um it's a good question um you know uh, i just you know when the pandemic happened and i had time uh i just uh, i saw the opportunity i saw that uh, people still wanted to network and I knew that we could, we could do this, uh, online. And so, uh, I just kind of jumped into it. Um, and you know, to be honest, I don't know that it's like, once you get your systems and processes down, 
it's not too uh, it's not too challenging because, like anything, um, when you kind of figure out the kinks and you, you find the best way to do things, um, then you get kind of into a routine. So, uh, you know, we do about five minutes of intro on the when we start the call, and then uh, then we jump into some breakout rooms, and then we come back into the main room with everybody for about five more minutes, and so we kind of get this cadence going. And so uh, after you do that a few times, um, you, uh, you know, we found what works well for us and um, it gets a little more routine, so to speak, and it's not as um, chaotic. Certainly in the beginning, we had to figure out what, um, what worked, right? We started off with like 20 minute breakout rooms and then, um, you know, we would have people that would like Zoom bomb the call. And so we had to kind of uh, ratchet up the security settings we had. And there's all these little things we had to work out over time. But, you know, we've been doing it for a few na years now. And so we, we certainly got our what we think works well. And, um, uh, yeah, there's been a lot of changes over the years. But that's, uh, I think, what happens in any business is you, uh, you get started and um, – uh, you figure it out along the way. And, and really, um, if there's anything uh, I can share with the audience, uh, one of the biggest lessons that I've learned is that um, you, you, find, you tend to find the most success when you just get started. You know, the times that I've really tried to strategize and anticipate and figure out how, how I was going to do a project, those tend to be the things that I put off and never really get started. Whereas this is one of those examples where I was like, I don't know exactly what I'm doing here, but I'm going to get started and I'm going to figure it out. And um, and the, the interesting thing is there's so many things I learned that I couldn't figure out if I didn't get started, right? There was no way to anticipate a lot of the things I learned and adjusted on. And so when I look back, I go, wow, it was really imperative that I just get started. You know, I can't overthink this. And so I would just encourage um, those listening, if you're thinking about starting a business or if you have a business and you're thinking about going in a new direction or having a new product or service, uh, my, my suggestion would be just get going. Just take that first step and you're going to figure out things that work, figure out things that don't work. And you're going to kind of iterate on it. And that's going to lead to more success than if you really try to uh, figure out the whole thing before you get started. So true, so true. There's so many things when we're thinking about starting something that we don't know we don't know. So we can't plan for it at all because it's not in our mind yet. We don't know what's required of it. So mm -hmm. yeah, I I do the same approach. Like I just start. And as as long as you start having your focus on that specific subject, you'll figure it out, you'll find solutions. And, and sometimes the solution that then might be, I'm not doing this anymore. That's also a solution. Yeah. Yeah, you, With, might, throw out th you might throw out the whole idea altogether, but yeah. you, um, you know, you'll never know if it's a bad idea unless you give it a shot and um, yeah, find out for sure. Yeah, you don't have to live with that what if. Exactly. What if I did it? You, you know you did it. Um, there might come yeah. a what if if I continued, but then that you have to quit at the right time to make yeah. sure that that's not a thing. Well, I tried the avenues and, and this is enough for me, mm -hmm. which is, it's a skill in itself to be able to do because like quitting on your little baby. <laughs> We're, like yeah. you doing so many networking events, like what's the weirdest thing you have seen or heard of? Uh, the weirdest thing. <clears throat> Well, uh, I mean, some of the weirdest things has been like uh, when when people um, join the call that are kind of like those Zoom bombers and things like that, and it's just it really throws you off. Um, maybe some some of the times where it's less um, uh, malicious, where somebody joins the call to network, but they're very kind of green in that area. They they mm -hmm. maybe don't own a business yet, and they're really just trying this out. And they're maybe a little bit too casual and, um, and it, uh, you know, you've got a variety of different personalities. And so I think the times that we've had um, folks on our calls that, um, um, you know, seem a little bit odd or just don't fit the right 
culture, those those have kind of been some interesting moments. And as an organizer, I would say, like, if if somebody listening to this call is thinking about doing events like this, that is one of the um, that's one of the challenges I would say is like um, navigating the conversations, right? So you have, you know, subtle things like someone that's talking a little bit too long and kind of taking up the time that everybody has because you're all sharing that time as one person's talking. And so knowing how to kind of politely interrupt or um, change the um, direction, you know, because Sometimes people might talk about politics or religion or sensitive subjects. And, um, you know, how do you respond to that? Or how do you, you know, as the host, you have to kind of manage that because what you say and how you respond to that um, um, is how people feel on the call, right? So you got to be aware of that and very kind of tactful and, and um, um, you know, there's other things like someone might get offended uh, or someone might get um, upset or whatnot. And um, as the host, you have to be aware and sympathetic to those. So, um, you know, if someone gets upset and you're not aware of it and you just kind of keep rolling on, they may leave your group and you had no idea. And so, you could, you know, on a Zoom call or whatnot, you kind of look at the room and try to just pick up, pick up on like uh, visual cues and things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, you gotta, <clears throat> I think, you know, I've been relatively successful because of the way I've been able to manage the rooms, you know, you gotta keep it upbeat, you gotta stay positive, you gotta make sure everybody's being heard, and you gotta be, um, uh, yeah, you know, if you, if you don't, I think as a host, you can really allow the call to be, um, kind of subpar in a way, because if you don't put any energy into it, if you don't, if you don't think kind of, um, kind of strategically how the call is going and how everybody's getting value, then people can, um, join the call and not get much out of it and think, oh gosh, why was I here? Um, so there's some things to, to kind of, uh, keep in mind as you're leading the call, if you're doing these sort of things. I can imagine. Well, a, a tip for a person that wants to start a networking event. Um, I, if you have a problem with people going on too long, I would start my networking about with some facts about attention spans. Mm. <laughs> there you go. What happens if you speak longer than a minute? This happens. People just drop off completely. Um, even do your own research, maybe. Um, because there's definitely something to it. Like People remember a 30-second pitch much better than a two minute pitch generally depending on how good both of them are of course there's some variables in there yeah it's a good note yeah yeah and and I, if i'm ever going to do a networking event i'm going to do like viking networking so you, you you expect that it's um that fluffies and ponies and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> might be a bit um edgy and not so heartfelt <laughs> in a way yeah yeah you gotta you gotta understand the room to, i've been to networking event like that um probably more extreme than i would want to do it but it was cool because he made it very clear in the start that this was how things were going to run if right. you were not on board with it you can leave um, and at that point if they go ahead because you have warned people if they go ahead and, and get really offended at well, still in fault at this point um yeah, it's a good point. Like setting the tone for the call. You can have any type of call, um, but yeah, setting the tone ahead of time. Prepare. So the people, yeah, people's expectation is good. I think both on the um, the style of the call as well as kind of the structure of the call. Because I think a lot of, yeah. there's so many different events and networking uh, groups out there that when people join the call, they might have their assumptions on what's going to happen and how it's going to work, but they're really not sure. You know, is there breakout rooms? Uh, am I going to get called on? Do I have a chance to be talk about my business? You know, there's so many different ways it could go. So I think as uh, an organizer, being able to um, walk people through their the expectations, like here's how it's going to go. And we try to do that on our call so that if you're brand new, you you get a sense of, okay, here's what the hour is going to look like. And here's what's expected of me. And, and um it allows them to start off on the right foot. Yeah, that's a, a very crucial part. 
in regards of, of starting up a networking event, uh, before you had Beats, I don't even know where you alluded to it was called something else before. Uh, I don't... B and I, yeah. B and I, yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't know it was, the, it was something even before that. Um, yeah. I, I was only in the Beats days, but how do you like get a networking event off the ground? I wanted to ask you because I know the same thing. You can make a bunch of content uh, and you can even make good content. But if you don't know how to get attention towards that content, it doesn't matter. So how do you get people to sign up for an hour? Because that's actually quite a long time to get people to spend. Yeah. No, great question. Um, and, and one of the most challenging parts of uh, running a networking organization is getting people there, right? Like how do you yeah, how do you get, how do you get people to yeah commit an hour of their time, which could be spent on their business, which could be spent in a variety of different ways, and um, you know. I think, um, you know, you, like with anything, you got to think about what value are people getting out of your service. And so for networking, it's they're spending this hour to help grow their connections and their network so that they can um, uh, get opportunities. And uh, further than that, you know, build these relationships for partnerships and uh, collaborations and all sorts of things beyond just the immediate business. And so um, it, it certainly is worth people's hour, you know, especially if they have a business and they need to kind of continually get new opportunities and build new relationships. So that hour is certainly worth it. But um, there's a lot of groups out there. There's a lot of ways to get those um, connections and relationships. So why come to our group versus another? And uh, I'd say um, the way to get people there is really uh, that personal connection ahead of time. You know, the way I got my first event to to uh, be filled with people was reaching out to those connections I had and said, "Hey, I'm doing uh, I'm doing a thing in a month. It's on this day at this time. Are you free?" And um, as somebody that I knew from maybe a business connection or a personal connection or whatnot. Um, they said, oh, that sounds great. I'll be there. So, okay, now that's one. And I reach out to some more people and they go, oh, that sounds great, but I'm not free on that day. And so it's kind of a numbers game. Um, but the nice thing about networking is that um, there's a ton of small businesses out there that need these events. And so um, the people that I'm connected to are also connected to others that might be interested. So me getting that one person to say, I'm going to be there. I'm signed up. Now that person can invite a few more people. And so whether that's for that particular event or over time, that's really how we've been able to grow because the word of mouth um, with the quality of our events has grown. Um, and so, yeah, that's what, that's what worked for us is, is less of um, kind of putting out ads or social media posts. I mean, that certainly helps getting that tension. Um, but um the that personal connection that outreach uh we've seen the best um, transaction on people committing to coming and then actually showing up and participating and then you know eventually becoming members and continuing to be a part of the community it really starts with that initial relationship with somebody that's connected to the community well how you reached out to me and we got connected is actually quite a good example of that because we got on a one-on-one -on -one before ever sending your events right. and I invited a person that went to your event before I went myself because I had that connection and I had a pretty good idea okay Matt seems like a good guy so mm -hmm. I want to invite people to this event because they can probably get value from it mm -hmm. yeah so that's a good point you make there and it definitely do work and um, one of the things in, in regards to like a networking event you also want a lot of people there to for it to be yeah. valuable um, at least that helps in, in bringing value so sticking on the like b and i days i had you you had like five people just show up like five ten people Wait, sorry what's the question have i had yeah. that yeah before like back in the day so, yeah we've certainly had calls where it's just a yeah handful of people what, what do you do you have a hour you have five people. You can't do breakout rooms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the same person you're gonna meet in every room. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, how do you deal with that? Yeah, good. Another good question. Um, so what we've done, which is actually um, 
has worked out to be really great calls is to switch to what we call like mastermind style. And so instead of um, uh, like a typical networking event where the goal is to meet uh, a variety of different people and try to start relationships, it's more about um, taking the five, six people on the call and uh, really digging a bit deeper and saying, you know, what are you working on in your business right now? And what can you use support on from the five of us, right? Um, can we give you feedback? Can we share our experiences? Can we um, uh, can we try to make a connection for you? There's so many different things you do uh, with your business partners or with people that you can connect with. And so um, we really just try to dig a little bit deeper. Uh, I found in networking um, a really key thing for people, especially if you have been to networking events and you, you do this as a, a normal part of your business activity is um, the word curiosity, I think should be on uh, kind of every business owner's mind when they're networking. Because if, if you think about like, take my, I, I do graphic design on the side. So let's take graphic design as an example. Um, you might know, you might have some assumptions about what I do, right? You might say, oh yeah, Matt can do logos. He could probably do a brochure and um, whatnot, right? Um, but if, let's say you met somebody new and they're like, I need a graphic designer that can do websites. You might go, that's a good question. Does Matt do websites as well? I don't know. And then he goes, and I need it to be done with, um, you know, I need it to be a WordPress site. You might go, gosh, I don't know if Matt does websites. And I don't know even, I don't know if he does WordPress or something else. And so there's all these layers of the business of the graphic design business that you could learn as a networking partner, right? And so um, when you're on those smaller calls um, with just a few people, you can try to kind of dig into those layers and really ask those deeper questions so that you can be a better networking partner for them and say, like, how do you structure your, like, how long does it take to do a logo? Like, do you do websites and how long does that take? And, you know, there's so many different questions. And so I think if, um, uh, if you're a business owner and you're networking and you kind of keep that curiosity uh, top, first and foremost, um, you're going to learn a bunch about the people you're connecting with. That's going to help you support them better, build that relationship better, and they're going to appreciate it more. And you're, it's all going to lead to um, higher quality relationships, more business for everybody, and just more opportunities. And so um, some of those like smaller calls are some of our best calls, as you can imagine, with that in mind where it's like we really get to know each other and these opportunities start popping up where we go, oh, my gosh, I didn't realize you even did that in your business. I have a new connection for you that I never thought of, even though maybe even though we know we've known each other for years, I now have this connection that I've had for years and now I'm going to connect you. Right. So um, there's a ton of value that could come regardless of how many people are on the call. But I would say you know, it, it takes different dynamics depending on how many people. Because if, if there is 30, 40 people on the call, it's a little more challenging to go that deep. And it's more about breakout rooms and, and, and getting those relationships started and having that surface level stuff. Yeah, you, an hour is not enough if you have 40 people in the call for everybody to go in the main room. Right. Like that, oh, yeah, that would be challenging. Oh, a little, a little over a minute each. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It split up I've the time. I've been bombarded to the, with pitches for like an hour, or like, what do I do? What do I do? Like, it would be one big, one big mess. Yeah, you would lose people pretty quickly, or at least their attention spans um, pretty quickly. It, it's actually one thing that we do on our calls is that we do three breakout rooms throughout the hour, twelve minutes at a time, and we intentionally make the rooms no more than like five people at a time. It's between three and five people. So that uh, within 12 minutes, you can kind of go around the room, go around the breakout room pretty quickly and get a sense of everybody in your room. And then you still have a little bit of time to ask those follow up questions. And so we found that um, this is one of those things we found out over time is that breakout rooms of, you know, three to five uh, with about 12 minutes is pretty optimal for um you know, any size group, if you, the more people you have, the more breakout rooms you do so that you can keep that three to five. But, um, that, uh, you know, it's interesting, the dynamics that change when you have six people in a room 
and you got to split up whatever period of time, it, it's a different dynamic. And so we found that we like three to five people per room, 12 minutes at a time, uh, with the goal of getting a first introduction and then being able to have a little bit more time for questions or, you know, um, a little bit of conversation before you go back to the main room or go to another breakout room. Yeah. yeah. If you have much less than like two minutes, you ain't going to have time to any other chat than like quick pitch, quick questions, introductions. And that's basically it uh, for the people that's taken all this time to listen to us today. Uh, I want to know about Matt. Of course, we have the Veets link down below. Um, what else should they know or reach you? Um, thanks. Um, so, yeah, the link, uh, uh, Veets.io is the, the site. So you can find our calendar. To, you know, we do a Friday uh, visitor day. So for members, we do a Monday call uh, that's all about kind of sharing your projects and uh, supporting each other on our your initiatives. Wednesday, we uh, do that uh, kind of mastermind style where we kind of dig into challenges and goals and struggles and whatnot. And then Friday, we do a visitor day. So if anybody's interested in checking out our group, they can come on a Friday. Uh, we ask that you sign up a few days in advance and we'll, uh, we'll, we, we have a form that we get to know you a little bit so that we can properly welcome you to the call. And, um, uh, that's our, our Friday call, 10 a.m. Pacific time. Um, uh, and be great to, yeah, if you're a business owner and you're looking for, uh, you know, authentic community, uh, it'd be great to have you come check us out. Um, and I guess the other thing I would mention is that we're a hybrid um, uh, networking organization. So we do do in-person events. We've started doing events uh, where I'm located in San Jose, California. And we actually have a conference that we're putting on in October um, so we're pretty excited. We're going to get 500 business owners together and we're going to focus on kind of AI and automation for small business. And so, um, if that's something you're interested in and you're in the area or, you know, somebody in the area, um, we can, uh, throw that link in here somewhere, I suppose. Um, but, um, yeah, um, we do monthly events as well in San Jose and we're starting to, um, do some events in different locations, uh, across the U S currently, we have a, a Boston event, a Boston, Massachusetts event coming up in um, September. And um, if you're listening to this and you're uh, in the U.S. Um, and you want to do an in-person event, but you just don't know how to get started, we actually would love to partner with you and uh, help you uh, get started. And we would kind of be the back end of it. Um, and as the person that's kind of on the ground in the location, you would help host, but we kind of partner together. So if anybody's, um, in that space and they want to kind of run their own event, uh, but partner with us, that would be a, a great connection as well. So I'll also leave your links in down there. And whilst people are down there looking for links, I'll also throw a link for our new course regarding content marketing. Uh, so check it out. It's free. What's the worst thing that can happen? <laughs> and again, thank you, Matt, very much for taking time to come on this podcast and share the value with us. And definitely check out 